On June 28th, NASA's Low Density Supersonic Accelerator Project conducted the first shakeout flight of a new way of testing technologies that will one day be used to land heavier, more massive payloads on the surface of Mars. We used a large 34 million cubic foot scientific balloon to hoist a 7,000 pound test vehicle to an altitude of 120,000 feet. The test vehicle was then released from the balloon, spun up for stability. and a large solid rocket motor accelerated to over four times the speed of sound and an altitude of 180,000 feet, a condition very similar to the conditions it would see at Mars. Once we reached the correct speed and altitude, we despun the vehicle. And then we got a chance to test our new supersonic inflatable decelerator. The camera lens covers deploy. We see that inflated very uniformly without disturbing the vehicle too much. And now we're seeing previously unreleased, high-definition, high-resolution, and high-speed video taken during the test. We used the supersonic inflatable decelerator to slow us to something closer to two and a half times the speed of sound. We use a balut to help deploy the new supersonic parachute. The balut is shot out the back of the vehicle at over 200 feet per second, and then we cut the balut free, and it begins to pull the parachute off the back of the vehicle. As the parachute begins to inflate, we see one of the surprising aspects of this test, which is the early onset of tears in the parachute. We see where those tears began, how they propagated, and otherwise how the parachute behaved as it began trying to inflate behind this very blunt object moving two and a half times the speed of sound, punching a hole in the atmosphere, and creating an extremely turbulent, chaotic environment for the parachute to exist in. We now have a data set that we will use to prepare for two more tests beginning in June of 2015.
three, two, one. Give it another two seconds. Yeah. In the tunnel. In the tunnel. Oh, big right. go. Get out of here. Oh, we tore it. Dang it. Tore the chute? Yep. yep. Big, the chute. big rip. Okay, that's what we need to see. Burn out, burn out, burn out. Nice job, girls. That was both stages, right? Yeah, yep. Burn. Yes, Gary! Yes. Oh, right! Way to go! So we expect that as we go forward in our missions, as it's always been the case, we've gone to larger and larger vehicles. The Sojourner rover was a small microwave, microwave oven sized rover, you know, about 11 kilograms. Then we went to the Mars Exploration rover, was 180 kilograms. Uh, now we have the Curiosity rover, which is 900 kilograms. So they keep on getting larger as we go towards Mars sample return and other missions in the future, especially if we want to land humans on Mars someday. We get to much, much, much larger payloads and we'll need much larger decelerators to slow them down. So the hard things we have to do on the project are to develop the technologies and to test them. We're developing two supersonic inflatable decelerators and one very large parachute. We have to get them to condition to test them. It's actually, that's the hardest part of the project, is to get them to the dynamic pressures they need, to get them to the, uh, to the mock supersonic speeds they need, get them to the altitudes they need to get for the supersonic test in order to simulate the conditions that they're going to see at Mars. We're making great progress on developing the articles, the parachute, the two SIADs. As you saw, we've, we have our test architecture in place for testing the strength of the parachute. The big thing is to get the vehicle together for doing our test in June of 2014, where we're going to take it up to altitude, do the supersonic flight. That's the most difficult thing, and that's actually the first flight is a shakeout flight to see if we actually got it to work right and got that architecture working. And then we have three more flights to really test the parachutes and the SIADs at the conditions that we expect them to see at Mars. If we want to land bigger things, bigger, more capable rovers that can drive further, and we want to land them at altitudes that we haven't been able to reach before, to explore new regions of Mars, and we want to be able to land them more accurately so we can focus some of the exploration, we need new technologies to do that. And it's not just for the science that we have, but also for the long-term vision of eventually being able to put humans and people on the surface of Mars. So we're developing new technologies to what we call inflatable aerodynamic decelerators, or supersonic inflatable aerodynamic decelerators, SIADs for short. Uh, these are devices that are deployed at around 4,000 miles an hour. 
uh, to increase the size of the aeroshell as it enters Mars' atmosphere. We're also developing a new parachute that would be used at Mars, a much bigger parachute that would produce two and a half times the drag of any parachute used previously on Mars at conditions um, much higher, much more difficult than previously would have been attainable. So what we're going to do is take this aeroshell, we're going to hoist it to an altitude using a very large balloon that's the size of the Rose Bowl. Uh, the balloon will carry this to about 120,000 feet. It will release this test vehicle. The test vehicle will have a, a large solid rocket attached to it that will accelerate it to 4,000 miles an hour and a little bit higher in altitude so that we get that environment, that test condition that would be very similar to how the devices would be used at Mars. And it's in that environment and in that state that we begin deploying these devices. And it's the testing of the devices that gives us confidence that we'll be able to work at Mars and that they'll perform the way that we expect them to perform. Our biggest problem is that the, these, these tricks that we use at Mars are very difficult to test here on Earth because Mars and Earth are not the same. But we do have one thing we can re reproduce, and that is if we go up high enough in Earth's atmosphere and we go fast enough, we can, we can simulate the drag conditions and the density conditions of the atmosphere at the right speeds that pretty does a pretty good job of matching Mars. And I think if we can get these technologies tested here on Earth, we will have a, a toolkit for future Mars missions to use for decades to come. Just like the testing that was done in the early 1970s gave us a toolkit for landing on Mars that we've used now for almost 30, 40 years now, um, we will be able to push that envelope one big step forward. Mars Science Laboratory, Curiosity Rover, is now the biggest thing we've ever sent to Mars. And right now, without new technologies, it is, will forever be, the biggest thing we ever send to Mars. So this, this technology program, LDSD, will make a difference and allow us to go beyond Mars Science Laboratory.